Choosing your starship, coming up next. Welcome back to our continuing series of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where we look at our Star Trek Enterprise kit from AMT from 1983. Now many of us are familiar with the history of the USS Enterprise because we watch it every time we turn on our TV and tune in to Star Trek the original series. But what about the other 14 ships in the fleet? What are their histories? And why are they included on the instruction sheet and on our decal sheet? And which one do you really get an interest over? Well, tonight we're going to look at that in more depth as we go over and see the history of the other Constitution class ships. The first ship that we want to start with is, of course, the USS Constitution, which is the class ship for all these other sister ships. Its number is NCC-1700. Many years ago, I built this model of the USS Constitution. This is actually built using the 18-inch Enterprise kit, which you have, but I've used the Franz Joseph Technical Blueprints to enhance the model to that configuration, which included taking the raised grid lines and scribing underneath so that there were grid lines on the bottom of the ship, as well as going down the neck. You'll note that the font is different as well, as this is a special Franz Joseph style of font that's not included on the decal sheet. And of course, Underneath, they have the name, the Constitution, and that's my model of it. And I hope to show you how to build one of these in the future. And now let's go on to the next ship. The next ship in the fleet is, of course, the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701. And of course, this again is a, another 18-inch Enterprise kit, much like yours. I think I built this out of the 1983 kit, but I built this when I was young. Still in school, <laughs> with uh, using an orange dish and blue in here. Um, these are the decals that are included in the kit. But on the NCC 1701, I used some other kind of font. Now, I've had this kit for a very long time. I painted this with a brush, with white paint. And of course, according to Star Trek history, the Enterprise was first originally flown by Captain Robert April, then handed over to Christopher Pike, and then to James T. Kirk. And the many exploits and adventures of the Enterprise, of course, you can find just by watching Star Trek the original series. So now let's go on to our next ship. Now, the next ship in our series is NCC-1702, the USS Farragut. This ship was commanded by Captain Garovic and was the first ship that Lieutenant Kirk served on way back when, when he just got out of Starfleet Academy. Now, because this is an early ship in Kirk's history, I've designed it to look more like the ship that you would see in the cage using the new 2009 decal sheet, which gives you the original markings for the cage. This kit is interesting because it was given to me by a customer and they had replaced the BC deck that comes with the kit with the Estes rocket engine um, Enterprise model kit with its BC decks and they also had this enlarged sensor dish and to add to that vintage feel I've added the spikes to the ends of the caps I've removed the grills out of the intercoolers, and I removed the grill out of here. And I also removed the ball on here and replaced it with the strap. Strap and bar, just like on the original episode. Now, this ship was not featured in Star Trek, but it was referred to in the Obsession. And the cloud creature that Kirk was obsessed with actually killed off 
Captain Garavik and half the crew of this ship. Now the next ship we're going to talk about is NCC-1703, the USS Lexington. This ship was commanded by Commodore Robert Wesley and engaged in the M5 computer tests versus the Enterprise. It was a battle simulation and unfortunately 50 crew members were killed but the ship was spared. Now unfortunately I don't have a model of this ship to show you. It is one of the 14 that I am missing but I will be building it in the future. Carrying on in our number sequence, the next ship we have is NCC-1704, the USS Yorktown. Now this model kit I built way back. This was one of my first attempts at trying to do something new with the starships. We removed the balls and my dad and I figured out a jig for drilling holes in the back of these, but it didn't really turn out quite right. So we're going to use the J-Bot decals in the future which are a lot better and easier to use. I also painted this model with aluminum paint and some transparency type paints. I added the spikes on here for sort of a second pilot type of ship, although I still have to enlarge the, the bridge dome. Now the Yorktown is an interesting ship in Star Trek because originally before Gene Roddenberry settled on calling the ship the USS Enterprise, it was going to be the Yorktown. And in the series, the Yorktown was supposed to rendezvous with the Enterprise before the obsession of Captain Kirk to destroy the cloud creature. On this ship, I also filled in the little depressions under here and sanded off all those rings just to sort of make it more accurate to the TV Enterprise. But the problem with this kit that I've had is I painted it with this nice aluminum and I've used bare metal foil for the windows and that sort of thing. And I never reinforced underneath in the seam lines along here. And this is a prime example of, of what happens if you don't reinforce your seam lines. And a bunch of the paint cracked off in here because I was using aluminum paint with a clear coat over the top and it didn't quite work out very well. Uh, I also added all these little raised bits onto the top of the saucer and then the underneath the decals came from the cutaway enterprise kit which I ordered a bunch of decal sheets from AMT way back in the day. I also added a bigger spike to the to the dish here which you can't really see too well. Uh, the problem with this kit is I was trying to take pictures of it outside one day and it was sitting on the stand and I never glue these to the stand and a gust of wind came up and blew it off the top of the car because I was taking a picture of it on the roof of the car upward this way into the clouds and yeah it hit the pavement it cracked in several places like I, I puttied under the neck here to get rid of the neck seam line and it cracked that, it cracked everything. The ship just ended up pretty broken. So, I don't know, maybe one day I'll restore this one or rebuild it or just leave it alone and find another, make another Yorktown model. The next ship in the series, the USS Excalibur, NCC-1705, was a ship that got engaged in the M5 computer tests and wasn't very successful. Here's a model kit that I built of it, and this is my first destroyed Starship model kit that I ever built. And I thought it was quite a cool kit and very fun. The back end of this is from a cap gun. I found a broken piece on the street one day and thought that would make a neat uh, blown up back end of an engine. And of course the intercooler, the Buzzard intercoolers here on this side have blown off and the damage is from what I could hear with Mr. Spock doing the battle report where the ships were hit 
and I used the Franz Joseph Tech Manual blueprints to figure it out, as well as inspiration from the Wrath of Khan to see what it looked like. And you'll note here, there's a hole right through, right through the saucer, as it is on the other side. And another part of this, <clears throat> the damage on this, is when I was young, of course, I always built a lot of Star Trek kits, and I had a friend who also built kits, but he was not as refined as I was. And he was trying to cut pieces off with cigarette lighters and other weird things you never do in model building, but he did them. And then when he got frustrated enough with everything, he just threw all the pieces he had in a box and said, here you go. So things like this, where the engine is actually melted, that was my friend's cigarette lighter experiments. But all in all, I think this turned out really well. Oh, I built the actual pylons. This is two solid pieces of plastic, styrene plastic. And uh, there's only one problem I had. I didn't reinforce the seam lines on here again. And this ship fell off the table. So as you can see, it's very wobbly. I also sprayed the back with uh, a rattle can, just blew some flat black across it. Gives it a pretty nice damaged effect. The next ship we have in our series is NCC-1706, the USS Exeter, commanded by Captain Ronald Tracy. Now this ship was featured in the Amiga Glory and was found orbiting the planet with all crew crystallized and the captain was on the surface of the planet. Now that starship didn't get destroyed, but everybody, the crew, and everything was basically lost. The next ship in the series, the USS Hood, NCC-1707, was also a participant in the M5 computer test in the episode The Ultimate Computer. Although the ship took no damage, we don't really know much about it after that. The next ship that we're going to discuss is NCC-1708, the USS Intrepid. Now this ship had two appearances in the show, although in the original series they were just suggestions. But in the Enhanced Edition we actually get to see it once. And in its appearance in Court Martial, it is under repairs at Commodore Stone Starbase. And the second time we hear about it is in the episode The Immunity Syndrome, where it is the first ship to actually investigate the space Amobia, and it is piloted and crewed by all Vulcans. And it gets destroyed, and Mr. Spock is able to understand that the crew was lost through mental telepathy. The next ship we're going to discuss is a rather controversial ship, as far as the Star Trek lore goes. It is the USS Valiant NCC-1709. Now what makes this one sort of controversial is because in our instruction sheet here, it's listed as one of the ships that's a Constitution-class ship. And the episode it was mentioned in is called A Taste of Armageddon. Now the ship was supposed to have been destroyed 50 years before the Enterprise gets there, which turns it to being destroyed in 2217. Uh, the question that sort of comes up with fans and whoever, a canon, is, is it a Constitution-class ship or not? So the actual Star Trek canon crew have decided that it is not one of the Constitution class ships. Although in the old book, The Making of Star Trek, it is one of the ships that Gene Roddenberry wanted in the series. So when we get to the Franz Joseph Tech manual, we actually have it listed in that list. So however you want to do it, you can use that as your background story. Maybe it went through a time warp and was blown up 50 years earlier when it reached the planet, but we don't really know, it's sort of conjecture.
The next ship on the roster is the USS Congo NCC-1710. And again, this is one of the ships that Gene Roddenberry had mentioned in his book, The Making of Star Trek. However, it was never in any episode or series. The uh, background information on the ship is entirely your own. The next ship we have in our series is the USS Potemkin, NCC-1711. Now this ship was named after a famous Russian battleship which partook in the 1905 revolution and it w appeared in two episodes but mentioned only. The first being the ultimate computer where we find out that it did take a hit from the M5 computer and then the second is in Turnabout Intruder, it was supposed to rendezvous with the Enterprise. And after that, we don't know much about the Potemkin. The next two ships we're going to discuss have their own unique numbering system that doesn't follow the typical 1700 class system. The two ships I'm going to discuss are the USS Republic and the USS Constellation. The USS Constellation NCC-1017 is quite an interesting ship because it is the first model ship that we see destroyed on screen. Now, they didn't want to destroy the giant 11-foot model to film that one episode, so the studio actually went to AMT, which had just started producing their very first Enterprise kit back in the 60s and they used one of the model kits and destroyed it and then that's the ship you see in the original run of the doomsday machine of course in the enhanced edition now it's a computer generated graphic but the inspiration was from originally one of the amt kits which again is like your 18 inch model that you have in your hands um, I guess the, the best destroyed ship I have, of course, is the Excalibur. But basically, they did the same thing at the studio. You know, destroyed it in whatever way, melting the plastic and spraying it with stuff and whatever. Now, the ship, according to the story, was commanded by Matt Decker, who was a Commodore. And, of course, as the episode shows, the ship was destroyed inside the mouth of the Doomsday Machine. The final ship in our series is the USS Republic, NCC-1371. Now this is a ship that was mentioned in Court Martial, and it was a ship that Ensign Kirk and Ben Finney served on when Ensign Kirk noticed that there was a problem with one of the warp engines, and it was Ben Finney's job to look after it, but Ben Finney didn't realize it, so Kirk logged the entry into his book, and that caused a big problem that Kirk got promoted and Ben Finney got reduced in rank. But you can find out more about that if you watch the episode of Court Martial. Now, as far as Star Trek kits go, I think this is my best kit that I ever built because I added in all these details, like the raised panels, the phasers, the little lines on the front of the nacelle engine caps. I also used one of the old deflector dishes from the original aluminum kit, and I made my own ring here for this beacon underneath, as well as used bare metal foil for the windows, the chromes and golds, and I added in the gray underneath here, and on the neck. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Monster Hobby's Let's Build It, where we got to look at the sister ships in the Constitution class series, the sister ships to the USS Enterprise, and I do hope that my little history of the ships will be able to help you to make a decision on the name and number for your ship. If you have visited our YouTube channel, the homepage, recently, you'll notice that I've added a few buttons underneath the banner. Now, one of those buttons, if you click on it, will lead us to our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca, 
And another one will lead you to our Facebook page where you can talk to me directly. And I've got some Pinterest there too. If you're Pinterested, you can click the button and find us. And I added in a PayPal button in case you feel that you want to donate a little to our programming here. Hey, if guys can say Patreon, I can say PayPal. <laughs> And if you would like to see other videos in this continued series, please click here, here, and here. And don't forget to subscribe to us right here. And until next time, live long and prosper. And don't forget, we're going to also look at painting the minor details coming up next.